your own. Hi guys, I'm Felicia, and I am grateful to be a believer in Jesus. And I am an addict of everything, and I struggle with everything, but mostly heroin. And this is my story. I've always been an addict. Growing up, I was always different, always struggling, always looking for more. I butted heads with everybody, except my granny, who loved me unconditionally and took me and my sister to church on Sundays and Sunday school. When we were kids, I didn't see her much, but when I did see her, we went to church. My granny is the reason I had God in my life or even knew anything about him, which wasn't much. I knew God loved me, and he would protect me. And I knew Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will go my whole life trying to fit in with different crowds. I fit in with everybody. I connect with nobody. Though the wild ones suited me best, I was on my way to becoming an adrenaline junkie. The first time I got drunk, I was 12. The punch at my uncle's wedding was spiked and they left it in the fridge when they went to the bar for me and my cousins. Well, maybe not really for us, but you know. <laughs> the first time I remember breaking my first rule would be in sixth grade when I walked across town after school to Burger King with some friends and I didn't get caught. Life on the straight and narrow as I knew it was gone. Then I finally found a friend whose mom didn't care what we did as long as we didn't get caught. I would spend the next year and a half learning how to lie, cheat, and steal. And I became a pro. I would do anything not to be at home because my dad was always drunk and violent. I was always scared and shut off. When he was home, we definitely walked on eggshells. Every time my dad's truck pulled in the driveway, I would shut out everything and all my emotions, my feelings, and I was scared. And I was never good enough. I never made good grades, probably because I was drunk or high. I was always stealing alcohol from my parents, my grandpa, and the store. Life got so bad that I ran away once, only for my best friend to tell on me. And it wasn't out of love, she told. It was because we planned to run away together and went without her. I never went without food or without a roof over my head, but I was emotionally disconnected from my family. And because, because of that, I would have my first suicide attempt. But the only reason I didn't go through with it was because after taking my dad's gun out of his drawer, going into my room and sticking the gun in my mouth, I was thinking, dang, this gun is heavy. And with my luck, I'd miss, shoot a ball in the wall, and get in trouble. <laughs> so, there goes that idea. What could do? Later, I would meet another friend, and she was fun. We would plan to do meth together. Unfortunately for me, or fortunately for me, God was watching over me because my mom never seen to let me leave the house much after that idea. But my friend's mom would catch us skipping school and taking no dos and she would come to the house to talk to my mom as I pleaded with her because I was scared to death. She would make me promise to stop hanging out with her daughter and to stop skipping school. I skipped school one time after that and I felt so guilty. Then senior year, I made A's and B's and I actually went to school. My 
granny would pass away the next year, and I eventually would flip a quarter, and heads was Michigan. So here I am. My first boyfriend would end up being an alcoholic and abusive. Who knew? I would have my first baby, and eventually start smoking weed again, because I was so uptight. After almost eight years of being clean, unfortunately, he tried to control how much I smoked, and on top became more abusive and controlling. So I took my baby and I moved in with family of friends, which I would end up getting pregnant again, but being forced into having an abortion. <laughs> which I seem to cope with pretty, pretty well with, with more weed and house hopping. I became homeless with the baby. I would sleep in my truck when she was at her dad's, and I would find friends to stay with when I had her. But being a single mom, and I learned from a new friend how to hustle quickly and how to take care of myself, I would start embezzling money. I would lie to get an apartment and still buy smoking weed. I hooked up with this guy. And then we moved in together. And about eight months later, I thought I blocked the abortion out, but I woke up to a ghost baby running around the house. And that will be something I will never forget. <laughs> then we ended up having two more babies, getting evicted from every single place we lived in, going without food, water, heat, having busted toilet and busted pipes for months at a time. I learned how to survive off nothing and how to make something out of nothing. He also would be an alcoholic and an addict. And this would be what I would think to be the worst four and a half years of my life. I thought it would be my rock bottom. Because even though all the struggles I have been I had been high for five straight years, all day, every day. My dad would finally convince me to move back to Florida, and I finally had all I needed to move. I had left him a message that Thursday. <coughs> and he passed away that Sunday. devastated. But again, it was God's faith that brought me up here. And it seems to be God's faith that will keep me here. I will have my third baby and CPS would be called because I still smoked weed while pregnant. She would be a godsend. I would ask her to help me leave my situation. And I had met another guy who would support me while I went to a shelter. And he would also manipulate about a thousand dollars off of me in the course of me knowing him. I never knew his struggles with his life. He would end up, we would end up getting pregnant. But I had just got on my own apartment with my three girls. I got a full-time job, full-time student. And this guy seemed to be crazier each time. I got scared about being in another abusive relationship. So with the support of my mom, my sister, and another friend, I would yet again have another abortion. This time it was too much to bear. I did it out of fear not because I wanted to, but the drugs they gave you, man, was so strong. I felt nothing, and I was hooked on pills that week. Then I met the fun guy at work, and he needed some pills, and I could get them. So we became inseparable, hanging out, having fun, working together, 
Life was fun again on the outside. He soon introduced me to Oxycontin. And I would be having withdrawals before I even knew what they were. And from that moment on, I vowed to never be sick again. I would always make sure I had money for pills for the rest of my life. I prayed for cancer just so I would have extra money to support my kids and I could still be high. I was sick. I was very sick. Yet I felt God had cursed me by closing my womb from having an abortion. But it would be a year and a half later, I would learn that through all this, God was protecting me because my boyfriend would die of a disease. My boyfriend would die of HIV, and I would not get it. Life could not get any worse. How was I supposed to support my habit on my own? But it's amazing how much money you can manipulate off of people when someone, when there's a death. I would become more strung out than ever more depressed than ever. I was barely surviving. The previous guy that I had the last abortion with would pop back into my life, only to introduce me to heroin and how to shoot up. Through the whole life struggles, God was present though. He protected me and my children from any real harm, from me not overdosing, from me passing out with cigarettes and not burning down the house. He also gave me some warnings to get clean. I got bit by a spider, spent five days in the hospital. That was my first chance to get clean, and I failed. I came home, and my daughter had an asthma attack. We spent three days in the hospital, and I knew that was my second chance to get clean, but I failed. We left the hospital early because I was dope sick, picked up my friend, and he ended up having to drive because I was so high. And we got pulled over. And that was my third chance. I looked up and I said, okay, God, I know this is you. Because I was miserable. And I confessed to the cops that I was high. And then when we get in jail, I got high again. I had no clue where social services had taken my kids. I had lost my whole world and still can't stop getting high. I can't stop. I tried. I pleaded. I still got high. I finally got a job. Then I ran into this kid I was in jail with. And we eventually hung out with the promises that he could bring me a few packs of heroin. He never leaves. He's a dope man with a very rough life. Two weeks later, I go back to jail, but he puts money on my account so I don't have to eat that jail food. I was in love. We were in love. We needed a baby. He started smoking, snorting cocaine and I still got high. He started smacking me once in a while, but within six months, he was beating me from head to toe, choking me to almost death, feeding me dope in between, and the cycle continued until God spoke through him one day and said, I only beat you because you don't call the cops. And I knew that was God speaking, and that was my first God moment. And within that week, I finally, after he threatened and almost punched me in the stomach with me being pregnant with my fourth baby, I left. I ran out of the house with him, angry and looking for me. I hid behind every available building as I ran to the domestic violence shelter. And I finally made my first police report. I finally got a sponsor. While I was in the shelter, God really had my attention. At this point, I ended up having to go to trial over my kids. 
and there was a good chance I was going to lose them forever. And during the trial, they found out I was pregnant and about this guy's past. The trial was very ugly. And this will be my second plan at suicide. I sat down and I had a conversation with God. I saved one needle and I hit it. And if I was going to lose my kids, I would shoot up enough dope to overdose and kill myself. And then I didn't tell anybody because I was serious. But I continued on with my life and my sobriety. Went to meetings, therapy. And I was very serious. I was with my caseworker moment the letter came in the mail. It will be the moment I'll never forget. I had to read the letter three times. Termination denied. Still, it would take a year for my kids to come back home. I would meet a lady in treatment who would always invite me to her church and to CR. She was very annoying. But after six months of invites, I went. I cried. I loved it. God touched my soul, and I haven't looked back since. I loved it so much. I started going to church there. And for my birthday, I chose to skip family therapy and join a thing at the church with an accessory of prayer. It was the best birthday present I could have given myself. I never felt so alive. Then a lady told me if I was an addict, I should get addicted to the Bible. I should start reading the book of John. So I did. And John 15, 5 would become my life verse. I am the vine, and you are my branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. My faith grew stronger. My struggles didn't seem so difficult to bear. God came alive in me, and I became joyful and serene. I have since been reunited with my kids, and I've conquered many struggles. I am far from where I need to be. But I have Jesus now, so I will be okay. My story isn't over, but if I just trust in the Lord with all my heart, and lean not on my own understanding, and on my way acknowledge him, he will make my path straight. And that's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Each day and each week, I am grateful for my life, for my journey with God. God has allowed me to take and for all the wisdom he has provided me. With all I have struggled in my life, some huge and some minor, but God is showing me that if I just believe and just trust him, he always provides. And if God says it, he will do it. I now have five beautiful girls, also growing in Christ daily. I have an amazing friends, family, and amazing support team. I would not trade a moment of my life for nothing. I look who I am becoming with God's guidance.